Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. Olisi, the son of Guru is my name. And the program is Zim Road to 2023. We are back today with another guest. His name is Walter Nsununguli Mbongolwan. He's from Zanu PF. He's the Zanu PF spokesperson for South Africa province. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome to your listeners as well. Yeah. Um, we had a Zanu PF member here uh, a few weeks ago. Before him, we hosted Triple C uh, officials as well. You are the second Zanu PF official that we have in this program. Um, I want us to, first of all, understand if you're coming here to represent Zanu PF South Africa, or you can talk about general issues regarding Zanu PF, even national issues. Uh, I'm here as an acting spokesperson for Zambia of South Africa. So, <laughs> so uh, I prefer that we concentrate on issues that affect us as Zambia of South Africa. Okay, when you say issues affecting us as a Zambia PF South Africa, are you talking about just the party or you also talk about issues that are affecting Zimbabweans as well in South Africa? Yes, uh, as long as it impacts on us as members of Zambia PF, we can be as wide as possible. Uh, I, I have no problem discussing those issues, but I'll give you an example of perspective. Okay. Um, the first uh, question would be, Zanu PF is the ruling party in Zimbabwe. There is no war in Zimbabwe. There is no revolution that is going on in Zimbabwe. And Zanu PF establishes an office in South Africa. Why is that so? Because for, a, for, for, for starters, one would believe that uh, people who are in South Africa or anywhere in the diaspora as, as Zimbabweans who are here because either they are experts here on employment or maybe company transfers or government to government skills exchange. But now we have Zanu PF in South Africa, membered by Zimbabweans who left Zimbabwe for economic reasons. Why is that so? Yeah, first of all, I want to tell you that uh, it's not true that there is no revolution in Zimbabwe. There is a revolution in Zimbabwe. Zanu-PF is a revolutionary party, and the revolution is still ongoing. Yeah. Uh, we haven't stopped uh, revolving because of the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, currently, we want the political revolution, but we are still in a war. We are in an economic war. Uh, the reason why you say we are economic uh, migrants or it's because Zanu-PF is being... Uh, Zanu-PF as a revolutionary party which won our independence finds itself again having to wage a new war, an economic war which is why there are sanctions against Zimbabwe so Zanu-PF is members find themselves here because there are sanctions which have made life difficult they manufacture pain for the people of Zimbabwe uh, which is why you find us here um, we will talk about the sanctions. Yes. Um, how many members does some PF have in South Africa? Registered members. Uh, I, I, I can give you that number of the of the cap. Okay. Yeah, but it's thousands. It's in thousands. Okay. And, and you have offices here in South Africa. Well, well what do you mean we have offices? We, the reason why I'm here is because we run uh, an office. Yeah, I mean, Let's say somebody wants to visit you or somebody wants to join you. Do they? Do you have an office which is manned twenty four hours a day, or maybe eight to five every day? We we currently are not. We don't have premises which we we, we have a mobile offices where we have a structure uh, which is uh, which has got all the youth lead members and also the main wing members. So, but we meet in different spaces depending on the availability of space that we rent. Okay, uh, and then there, is, uh, there, is, there are campaigns for elections back home. Uh, we have seen Triple C, we held a, a, a rally, about two or three of them. Uh, we haven't seen a rally by Zanu PF here in South Africa. Is it because you hold these rallies uh, in locked doors? Is it because you are scared of Zimbabwe you cannot hold rallies openly uh, why, why, why have we seen you? Or is, it, is it because you are doing more at home than you are doing anything here in South Africa? There is that myth that uh, people in the diaspora uh, 
supposed to vote uh, the opposition. Uh, it's a myth because we know from our assessment uh, that many Zimbabweans support Zambia, even in the diaspora. The reason why we have not held uh, meetings or rallies because we know our communication has been clear that we, we need to go and support our candidates uh, in, in Zimbabwe. So most of our members in South Africa, they have traveled. They are in Zimbabwe as we speak, in the different constituencies, supporting candidates who, were, who, who went through the primary elections. So it's not true that we are afraid of Zimbabweans. Zimbabweans love us, we love Zimbabweans. Uh, there is no other party that is loved like Zambia PF in Zimbabwe. We have, we have seen Triple uh, C uh, run around uh, saying they, may, they, they will win elections. They won't win elections. This election is already over because we know, you know that we went through primary elections. And through our primary elections, already we had a deep stick of what is going to happen. It was a harbinger of what is coming. Uh, very soon you will see them after 23 August. They will be crying foul, they will be crying in rigged elections when it was clear, or it is very clear, who is going to win this election. Yeah, uh, when, when you say that Zimbabwe is in South Africa, you mean that they support any other party than ZANU PF. Uh, the other ZANU PF member, the political commissar of South Africa, he was sitting here just a week or two ago, and he said that he is scared of walking around in South Africa. He said that. Zanu PF members do not feel safe here in South Africa, and you are telling us that uh, Zimbabweans in South Africa support Zanu PF. Now, this becomes, um, can I say, it's, it's a mixed message that I'm getting now. Uh, I can tell you from Zanu PF's perspective yeah. that Zanu PF members have no reason to be scared as they walk around here in South Africa. Uh, because uh, I, I, I've, I've not seen any hostility against Zanu PF members. I've never seen anyone trying to attack Zambia members. Yeah. Uh, I wear my scarf everywhere where I go, and no one has ever said anything to me about Zambia being something negative. Was instead, a lot of people come to us uh, and they want to know what's happening in Zimbabwe. We tell them Zimbabwe is on the move. We tell them Zimbabwe is uh, ever since the Second Republic started. We have seen significant changes. We've seen a lot of changes and. Everybody is very happy with us here in South Africa. Okay, um, the first time I saw you, uh, you were a member of South. I don't know if it was the first party that you joined. Uh, then after Sapo, you left Sapo. I remember it was unceremoniously. You joined the MTCT, which was led then by Moke Tswangarai. Uh, after that, I don't know if you joined another party, but now you are in Zanu PF. Uh, I want to understand the dynamics because you've seen it in all these three parties at least. But I want you to tell me and the viewers the difference between Zanu PF and these other parties that you've belonged to, which makes you now even come out in the open to speak on behalf of Zanu PF. Yes, I realized that uh, I had to leave those parties because. Their whole ideology is non-existent. There is no ideology. Yeah. They are funded by people who are hostile to the revolution. I realize that Zarukhev, because of the manner in which it prosecuted the revolution and brought independence, it is the only party that carries the aspirations of the people of Zimbabwe. It is the only party that understands where we are going. When we talk of sanctions, when we talk of uh, uh, the fact that Zimbabwe is under sanctions, some of these parties, they don't understand that. Some of these parties, they think that we are just like clans standing around uh, these, these issues because they are funded by the same people who brought sanctions to Zimbabwe. And these sanctions are illegal sanctions. Sanctions are supposed to be sanctioned through the United Nations. These are not sanctions. Uh, these are illegal sanctions that we brought to Zimbabwe because of the land reform program. And I realized that after having worked uh, in, in Zimbabwe uh, under the, the 
the, the leadership of Robert Mugabe at that time and now under Idi Nakako. I realized that Zambia was the only party where I can express myself in line with my own understanding of where Zimbabweans are going. Uh, you also ask what is the difference between what I experienced. Yes. Uh, when I joined ZAPU, I thought that <laughs> it had the same ideals of the revolution since it was uh, also part of the, the struggle for, 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 for independence. Yes. The ZAPU that I joined, uh, it is totally different. It was totally different. The, the, the ZAPU that exists, it only exists in ZANU PF. That part which uh, walked out of ZANPF is, is no longer ZAPU. ZAPU exists in ZANPF, is part of ZANPF. LDC is a very confused party. That's why it is uh, like split many times. And uh, if you look at it now, I think it's very difficult to recognize it. Yeah. Because it is uh, a party which is, uh, it follows the money where the money or the funders tell them what to do. So I, I can't be part of that. Okay. So I had to leave, and ever since I joined ZANPF, I, I have not felt like lost. I feel like I'm in the right place. And how long have you been in ZANPF? Uh, five years now. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll agree with you on one thing. I agree that Zimbabwe is under sanctions. I've always come out in the same time. I mean, Zimbabwe is under sanctions. We may differ on the reasons behind those sanctions. I, for one, do not believe that is because of these so-called human rights abuses because I come from Atikirile, you come from Atikirile. There was a time when Zanu PF or the Zanu PF left government killed more than 20,000 people. They were never slept with sanctions. In fact, this was all swept under the carpet because at that particular time, Mukabe was in the favor of the West. Now, uh, I will agree partly that it was because of the land reform, although I still believe there was more to it. There was the DRC war, which uh, I do believe was justified, except that the process went into people's pockets. But now that's not the, the issue that I want to raise. I want us to discuss when you say that the sanctions, yes, I admit, they are responsible partly for the economic downturn of Zimbabwe. But I will also say ZANU PF on its own has also been responsible for the economic downturn of Zimbabwe. Would you uh, agree with me on that? I don't want to agree with you on that. Uh, because one thing that people don't understand is the the extent to which these sanctions actually have damaged the political and social economic situation in Zimbabwe. Yeah, maybe you can elaborate on that. Yeah. Uh, you understand that as a journalist, you have uh, you are privy to the, the to the terror, the this uh, ex, in, in, which are in America. That has got an impact on every facet of economic life in Zimbabwe. ZANU-PF has now is a party which is responsible for government. They have to have come with creative ways of survival. So most people accuse Zambia of corruption. It's not true. What is corrupt are the sanctions. What is corrupt are the sanctions which have led people to fail to raise uh, money for the different programs which Zambia has led in Zimbabwe. So most of the people always accuse us of corruption. But what they don't understand is that this corruption is uh, actually a result of the sanctions. So you can't talk about the of corruption before you actually eliminate the sanctions. Eliminate the sanctions and then see if Zanupia will you accuse it of corruption. Uh, do you admit that there is corruption and Zanupia is involved in corruption? No, it's not. I don't admit that there is, there, there is corruption by Zanupia. Corruption is there in society. It is not necessarily driven by Zanupia. Uh, even the private sector, even the MTC, there are corrupt people there. So corrupt people if they are caught, they must be dealt with in terms of the law. But I think you cannot assign corruption as like a quality or a character of Zambia. Zambia is not corrupt by character. Uh, you are somehow positing that corruption in Zimbabwe began after 2000. Is that what you, you're driving us to? No, no, I'm saying to you that 
the corruption that people usually concentrate on is what actually came after the year 2000. But I'm saying the genesis of that corruption are the sanctions. It is the sanctions that prevent Zimbabwe from selling its gold. It is sanctions which make Zimbabwe fail to raise markets, money in, in financial markets. It is sanctions that make Zimbabweans survive in ways that they survive. You are here uh, in South Africa, uh, partly because of the sanctions that are in Zimbabwe. Uh, you are a product of the corrupt sanctions that are in Zimbabwe. The, you and me sitting here in South Africa are a product of sanctions. And therefore, it is not Zambia which created the situation that way. Zambia simply implemented the ideals of the revolution. It implemented the reasons why it went to war against uh, a very brutal regime, which still exists, by the way. The establishment uh, which created the conditions for going to war, they are still there. It's, it's just that they've changed the terrain, they've changed the platform for fighting. Zambia is still fighting. That's why we are a revolutionary party. We will still continue as a revolutionary party. We are not going to change that path. Uh, but until we defeat the, the, this war, we won the previous war, this, the second generation. We are going to win this one as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to differ with you yeah. on, on, on some aspects of uh, your last statement. Uh, I, I'm not here because of the economic downturn of Zimbabwe. I didn't intend to come to South Africa. I didn't intend to leave Zimbabwe. I personally left because of the intolerance of a free media in Zimbabwe. I left Zimbabwe via Botswana because there were people who were after me for committing a crime called journalism. And I believe I'm not the only one. And uh, when you talk about sanctions, I mean, first you spoke about corruption, and one would say the will of a, the will of a scandal that we all know about didn't happen after 2001, which is when Zidera was written. Uh, the unbudgeted for funds that were given to war veterans in 1997, 1996, were not uh, given to these guys after the sanctions, and I would say ESA that Zambia adopted, which had already failed in Zambia, which was the first point when our economy went down, was it because or didn't come after the DRA, and uh, involvement in the DRC war, which I say, in African terms, from a Pan-Africanist perspective, was justified because the DRC government, which is an African government, was under attack from uh, forces that were sponsored from outside. But still, those proceeds from that war didn't go to Zimbabwe as a country when the resources that were put in there were from the Zimbabwean government. So they benefited uh, a certain section of the people. There were no sanctions back then. The sanctions only came, the Zedera was written in 2001. So I want us to admit that before the formation of the MTC in 2000, there was already corruption in Zimbabwe. The war veterans went uh, to, to, to picket in Harare before the sanctions because they had their monies stolen, they put in their money and there were tractors that were supposed to be bought. Somebody diverted that money, that was before sanctions. That person or those people who diverted that money were uh, Zanu PF members. When war veterans were given money, Dumiso Dabewa got something like, he claimed something like 84% uh, disability. Joyce Mujuru claimed 99.9% .9 disability. Chihuri claimed around 40, 80 something percent disability. There were no sanctions back then. That was corruption. So I want us to genuinely agree that the sanctions, yes, they brought up another layer of corruption, but Zanu PF was already leading in corruption. No, look, uh, you, you, you don't conflate individuals as Zanu PF. Uh, I come here, I'm a spokesperson of Zanu PF. Yes. Zanu cannot send me to go and steal. If somebody decides to go and steal, uh, they, they are dealt with in terms of the law of the country. 
that does that not have a program to say oh, we must steal. There's, there, there's nothing, so you, you can't define people who have uh, transgressed the law and say because they, they transgress the law because they are zan uh, uh, So uh, you also mentioned that your coming to South Africa had nothing to do with your, 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 your crime called journalism. Yes. Uh, look, uh, that's one thing that Zambia have continued to, to educate its people, its, 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 its mothers to say. Colonialism and neo-colonialism come in different guises. There are people who call themselves journalists, yeah. and yet they, they parrot views that, that are counter-revolutionary. And sometimes they find themselves fighting Zambia activists because Zambia activists, by nature, they have to defend the revolution. And then as, as a result, we find that if you are a journalist and you are seen or to be writing stories that reverse uh, the, the, the ideals of the, the revolution, you may come into conflict with some of these people. But I'm not saying don't like what you like, you can write what you like, but there are consequences in a revolution. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I want to ask, is it counter-revolutionary to write that people are starving when people are starving? Or to write that people have been beaten up when people have been beaten up? Would you consider that counter-revolutionary? Not necessarily. But I think what is important is the, the, the context in which you, as a journalist, this land, there is a story behind the story. So as a journalist, you are able to see in a story things that other people cannot see. That is what also Zambia's uh, members or activists are trained to do. They, they can see more in a story written by a journalist. We are able to tell that this journalist is uh, writing for his masters. Uh, if, as a journalist, I report a falsehood, um, I believe that there are ways of addressing that. I have uh, Wanting a journalist dead. Uh, do you believe in free media? Yes, we, we believe in free media and honest media as well. Yes. So if somebody writes or reflects what is happening on the ground, and I'm not talking about myself, yeah, I'm talking about journalists in Zimbabwe. If somebody reports on exactly what is happening, whether they are writing for this or that media house, would you personally consider that to be counter revolution No. For example, do you admit that in 2008, after the first round of voting, there was political violence in Zimbabwe? Yes, there was. There was. Yes. And there are many journalists who, after reporting that factually, were hounded out of the country. I'm one of them. Stanley Poitman is one of them. There is plenty of... But you also believe that there is nothing called independent uh, media. I believe that it might... No, do you believe that there's, no, there's nothing called independent media? No, I don't. So you believe there's independent media? Yes, and I'll give you an example. You are on AVG News here. We are very independent. You are not independent no, because you call yourself... You are not independent because you call yourself independent. You are independent of what? Because you are also writing... Of political pressure. No, you, you are also writing according to what your masters want. Whoever pays the piper calls the tune. So in your case, uh, you call yourself independent, but there's somebody behind that name who actually tells you the slant, the agenda of what you must write. No, no, so no, it's no, important to no, us. No, 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 no. No. This is wholly owned by us. And by us, I mean uh, Zimbabwean journalists, who are based in South Africa. We don't get funding from anyone. Would you write about the programs that Idin Nagaba is championing in Zimbabwe? Uh -huh. Would you write about all the, 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 the achievements which the Second Republic has, has done in Zimbabwe? Would you write, have you ever written about the Baishangan Demu who was completely You won't write those because those stories are not convenient no, 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 for you. Me, so you are not independent. No, let me answer this. When um, Omega, showcased uh, his activities in Vung constituency, we published that. He gave that to us and we published it. There is a ZANU PF member who called us when we were donating ambulances. We published that. We even defended him. Personally, I defended him when somebody posted that ambulance and said the ambulance, the one of the ambulances that were donated 
by a Zanu PF member uh, was seen in Northwest, it has been turned back and it's now got uh, Northwest uh, number place. I personally defended that. You can even go, I can even send you the post on Facebook. So this is evidence that we don't pander to any political will. But well, that is a story for another day. There are two issues that you raised. Uh, the first one, you spoke about, uh, you spoke about Zano PF not having sent people, its officials to go and corruptly claim money from um, the Warfare's funds. I spoke about Joyce Mojuru, I spoke about Dumiso Tawewa. Joyce Mojuru was a, a minister by then, she wasn't yet uh, the vice president. I spoke about Tawewa, who at some point was the minister of Home Affairs. I spoke about a police commissioner who was serving, claiming to have an 84% disability, which means that he was only 16% able. And we're talking about someone who was a police commissioner here who continued, these people continued keeping their jobs. So, who was supposed to arrest them? You said they have to be dealt with by the law. This is a police commissioner. We should be arresting people for corruption. He claimed 84% disability, knowing this was corrupt. Godwin Matanga claimed some disability and they continued serving. So, now where then do we get the evidence that Zanu PF? fights corruption with its own members who are in government and those who are supposed to be arresting people who are corrupt under the watch of Zanu PF are committing these corrupt uh, uh, activities. And they, I'm not talking about things that were swept under the carpet, I'm talking about things that were published. So why didn't Zanu PF deal with these people? Uh, you, are, you, are, you, you are conflating the state with the party because in Zanu PF, we deploy our uh, members to the state to run the state affairs. But uh, they remain independent. They make their own independent decisions as to prosecution or investigations. I'm not sure that. whether the allegations that you are making uh, have been proven or you read it from some. No, 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 no. These are things that are proven. Okay. They are things that even this particular what I'm that I'm talking about would even attest to. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, uh, I, I've never seen that somebody saying I've got this money, I've got this money, I've got this percentage of disability. But what I'm saying is, it is the responsibility of state institutions that are tasked with uh, law enforcement to follow the criminal, uh, to follow where the money is. As ZANUPF, we raise it, we raise all forms of corruption if where we see today is at the head, but we don't necessarily help hold our uh, officials because they are already able, we, we deploy able officials who are able to, to, to prosecute those things. Well, what is the ZANU PF uh, policy on corruption? Internal ZANU PF policy on corruption, do you have any? Yes, uh, if you look at our constitution, it, it is very clear we, we are fighting corruption and uh, we, we don't tolerate corruption. In fact, uh, uh, I, I must go, I, I'm challenging you to, to, to read our constitution, I have read the, the, the section, but we are very, very firm on uh, corruption, we, we don't tolerate corruption, we, we enforce a zero, a zero, a zero tolerance approach. Uh, how do you enforce so zero tolerance uh, on corruption when you have people that are within your party, senior members of your party, uh, involved in corruption, and I'm talking about widespread corruption, corruption that is exposed publicly, and you don't do anything. No, you see, when you as a party now, not in Kafka, but as a party, I'm talking about a senior ZANPF official who was, Tamewa, it was at some point uh, uh, a chairperson for Bulawa province, Mujuru. I'm talking about people. You are saying allegations. allegations. Those are allegations. You are, you, are, you are talking about allegations. You are not talking about someone who has been charged and saying this person was charged for this particular crime. But you are talking allegations or yeah, we'll talk yeah, or something like that. We don't know. No, because I am saying the cops were supposed to charge these people for corruption were also involved in the corruption. But that's an allegation. No. That's an allegation. No, let's say organizational when an allegation of corruption is is uh is a waste 
there is a way of dealing with them. Either you investigate and clear them, or you suspend them pending investigation. It cannot just be business as usual. I'll give an example. And then you are, you are, that's why I said you are conflating ZANU PF with state functions. No, I'm talking about ZANU PF. Yeah, what I'm saying about ZANU Vice President. So I'm saying ZANU PF should have hounded those people uh, when, I am when they are not charged. I am saying ZANU PF, if it has a policy on corruption, would have said either. We are investigating these people and come up with the results of the investigation. Or outrightly dismiss and say, it. no, 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 this is a lie. The truth is that Mojo claimed one percent or didn't claim anything uh, in terms of disability. But Zambia didn't do anything about that. And what they will tell you is, so what? That is what they will tell you. And I am saying, these people didn't do anything, they didn't say anything. We had Kumbirai Kangai. No, but I think you're, 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 you speak as if you are a member of ZANU PF. Because from what you are saying, it's, it's like you've got internal, uh, you are privy to all our meetings, uh, whether we have our meetings at uh, branch level, district level, provincial level, up to national level. It looks like you have that information already. Because if you, if you are going to say ZANU PF didn't do anything, didn't say anything, Mm -hmm. Then you are a member of the PF. Oh. It means you, are, you understand uh, what we do more than what no, I am. I'm a journalist. I'm an investigative journalist for that matter. But so you know that as an investigative journalist, you went into our meetings and found that we no, didn't say That's it. a topic for another day. I am saying the PF is a public organization. Yeah. It is an organization that is in charge of government. One thing that the PF want people to, to feel secure with is one, its ability to fight corruption, especially when this corruption involves state funds. And I'm not talking about people here stealing from a political party or from ZANU PF coffers. I'm talking about people who, being ZANU PF officials, stole from state coffers. That means that ZANU PF, it, it, if it had a policy to fight corruption, would have gone to Zimbabwe to buy or to keep them in confidence about one. The, uh, the validity of these allegations about its members. But one thing also you must also understand is who is who is uh, public, who is saying these allegations. Most of these allegations come from people who are our detractors. These are not uh, this, that were raised. No, these are no these, these are allegations. Are, these, no, are no, no, these are documents that no. were submitted no, no. to this state by Zanu PF officials. By what they no, but if you say they were submitted by Zanu PF officials, it means Zanu PF is doing something about corruption. But what I'm telling you now is that uh, what you have been saying are just allegations, and I'm saying to you, Zanu PF, in its internal meetings, we discuss corruption, we, 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 we act on corrupt people. Okay, okay, but okay, Zanu PF, 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 no, 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 is a revolutionary path. And, and, and if we are prosecuting the revolution, there are certain things that we cannot uh, say in public because our revolution uh, does not play according to the winds of what you expect, you journalists, because you expect us to fight uh, the fight on corruption the way you understand it. We are not going to do that. ZANPF has got its own way of dealing with errant members. And ZANPF uh, is not going to be guided by hostile journalists, who some of whom actually have got an agenda to bring down ZANPF. Remember, ZANPF has got a huge responsibility to actually educate society, uh, to ensure that we actually transform uh, society for the better aspirations of our people, and there are certain tactics that we don't share with the media. Do, do, you, do you have examples of where some PF dealt with corrupt people or corrupt officials within the party? You mentioned yourself, you, 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 you said uh, there are people who have, uh, you, you mentioned the window of a scandal and people they have resigned and all that. So, there are, you, you know those instances yourself. As a journalist, uh, there are certain instances where we, we, we have dismissed people from. Because the, 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 there's a difference between dealing with internal uh, features within the party and targeting people because they belong to the weaker uh, faction and dealing with people who are corrupt. We are in South Africa here, we saw when allegations uh, that a vice president was involved in corruption, in corruption raised 
We saw Tawo Mbege uh, dismissing the vice president of the country. And that gave South Africans confidence that, no, 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 this guy doesn't, or the ANC doesn't prove corruption. But when it comes to Zimbabwe, you are saying that you've got a way of dealing with these people. But I'm a Zimbabwean. They stole from me. When you keep that away from me, then how do I have confidence in you? You must change that person you understand. But I don't how we I don't deal with this. I don't PF to in order for me to have confidence that the money that I pay in terms of tax is kept cleanly and is the, kept. Your problem, your problem is that you you approach you with this neoliberal uh, thinking and neoliberal approach to questions, and therefore, as long as you come with that neoliberal stance, you will never understand uh, our approach to dealing with corruption. Because your neoliberal uh, stance, you, you are liberalizing. We are not. We, we are not uh, that, 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 that. We are a revolutionary part. Yeah, but does a, re a revolutionary part, or does being a revolutionary part, mean that you have to prove corruption? Or where, no, we don't, or where you fail to deal with corruption, then you employ propaganda to try and then accuse people who raise these issues of being neoliberal or being anti you Because at the end of the day, if it is a revolution, it must be a revolution not for a certain few. It must be a revolution which benefits me, whether I'm a Zanukev supporter or I'm anti Zanukev, because by virtue of being a Zimbabwe. How have you lost by our being a revolutionary party? Because we have always made sure that we act in the interests of the majority of the people. So how have you lost? Except that you are resolute in your defense of uh, your neo-colonial or neoliberal thinking, which we are, we are not going to brook. We, 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 we are fighting this kind of imperialist thinking, where you come with these ideas that you have uh, borrowed from somewhere and you think that Zanke will actually fold. We won't fold. We'll continue to lead the people. We'll continue with our ways which empower our people. Do, do you care how Zanke think of, I mean, how Zimbabweans think about you as a party? We do. That's why we always win elections. Because they know how we think. We know how they think. There's a meeting of the minds between us and the people. Uh, for the past, uh, how many years, four to three years, the people have been making Every five years they have made a verdict of what they think about us. Right, every five years they have made a verdict. And uh, what you've paid them back with, uh, has it made them halfway for their trust in you as a party? Yeah, I don't what we, we mean, what we paid them. Uh, because what we understand is that as a, as a revolutionary party, we have always led and we have made sure that our people now own their resources. We are the only part that believes that our people must own their resources. If you look at Triple C, which uh, I hope you, you, you are not a member of, uh, they, they, they want to reverse the gains of the revolution. They have stated in their last meeting that they had in Guero, I think, they said they are going to reverse the land reform. What kind of thinking is that? Why did their parents fight? Why did their parents leave the country to go to Zambia, Angola, Mozambique, wherever they were, to fight for independence? Why did they do that if their children now are saying, oh, please come back, take back the land? What kind of uh, thinking is that? Yeah, right. Uh, I will state this. I'm not a member of Triple C. I saw the video that you're talking about, and I saw the allegations that uh, were raised around Chamisa. But because here we are a channel which seeks first to fight disinformation and secondly to state things as they are. And I will say for the benefit of our, our, our viewers and for your own benefit as well, Chamisa did not say that he's going to reverse the land reform. Are you going to defend him? No, no, no. Chamisa said in the video is that we have it on our channel and we even debunked it. Edited. Edited. No, not edited. Verba team. Chamisa said, and he spoke about, he was speaking about people that have been displaced or threatened with displacement by Zanu PF from Chilonga, people in Tinde, people who are on the verge of being displaced to create uh, space for companies that are owned by friends of the president of Zimbabwe and the Chinese. That one we have to state clearly. And I was going there to say, when you talk about a revolutionary party, I believe that when Zimbabweans went to war, 
And when I say Zimbabwe, I'm not saying ZANU PF because it's not ZANU PF which went to war. ZANU PF was part of the people that went to war. All Zimbabweans, every Zimbabwean who was alive by then, including a Zimbabwean like me who was born after the war, went to war by stepping on that soil. I become a son of the soil. I become somebody who went, I mean, who went to war. But that's another issue. People no, but when, you cannot discount the fact that Zambia was one of the vehicles that was I, prosecuted. I agree. I agree. There was Zambia, there was Zambia. What? But you cannot discount mm. by, you are trying to downplay the role Zambia has played in the liberation of the country no, no, no. by saying everybody fought. What? Yes, indeed everybody fought. But yes. there was a vehicle created to ensure that the war was organized in particular ways. And it was Zambia. There were uh, vehicles created in Zambia was one of them. But that was not my point. My point was, when Zimbabweans went to war, they were fighting, one, against displacement. That is a fact. They were fighting, number two, against segregation of the black race. They were fighting, number three, for economic empowerment. Then when you come back because you promised them, Zimbabweans pro uh, supported this war because of the promise of one, uh, control of their own resources, including a land which is a birthright. But when I have to be misplaced today or displaced today because some Chinese guy who happens to be a friend with the president who I have uh, discovered that there is good alluvial soils here where he can plant loosen for his daily cows, then that becomes counter-revolutionary. That's the first point. The second point is when you say that you, you went to a, a revolutionary, I mean you are a revolutionary party, and you want to silence me for speaking up against my pain, that's counter-revolutionary. So you asked me, how is ZANU-PF betrayed the revolution? That's the first point. And the other point is, when ZANU-PF went to war, they weren't fighting against a particular race. They were fighting against a particular system which elevated one race above another. But when Zanu PF got into this so-called agrarian reform, they targeted a race, they racialized this thing, they politicized I think I think you are, you are, you are, you are confused because you, you, you seem not to understand the history of Zimbabwe. Uh, the history of Zimbabwe was structured in such a way that only whites could have a certain franchise to be able to I, buy I, the I country. Say they were so, a system which no, no, no. certain race. No. That is the white. Yeah, they were fighting those whites who benefited from that system. Don't try it. That system had a face. That system had a face and the face was white. So you cannot then say they were not fighting uh, the whites. They were fighting the whites who were running that system. They were fighting a system which benefited only the whites. No, that, that is the liberal view which wants to pepper over the truth that the system, who, which came first, the system or the whites? The whites came first. And then they develop the system. And now you want to create some phantom system outside of the whites. Uh, it was the whites who created the system to benefit themselves. And therefore, they were fighting the whites. So you cannot then come here and say, no, they were fighting the system as if the system uh, was not meant to, to uh, benefit the people. Do, do, do. Today, you also mentioned the fact that uh, there are still displacements happening now. Yes. Yes. Uh, as a country which is young, we're still building. And as a country which is uh, on a nation building exercise, they are planning, they, 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 there's planning happening and there's continuous uh, changing of uh, the way we, we, we see ourselves. So if there's planning to say there must be a dam here, then obviously we have to move. If there's a plan that there must be a mind that people have to move, I think you understand. If, the the minerals act, you if, understand. If there has to be a field for losing, people have to move. Because they are, are occupying alluvial soils. How is the difference now from people who have moved from rich soils to this amazing land? By the way, remember, now we are doing it as Zimbabweans. We are understand, we understand what we want as Zimbabweans. So the, the movement now will not just be as brutal as it was done by the, the whites when they took people to those sensitive fly infested areas. Today, when you are moved, if you are moved, you are, you, you are not just thrown into the, into the air. There is proper planning where people are informed that no, uh, our country needs to 
do A, B, C, and this is how we. You are consulted. This consultation. The people, so, the people were more. But, but because the media, where, because, where, where they put, because, where they put because, because the media, you belong to the media, which is always looking for negative vibes, and therefore, from that story about people being moved to open way for a mind, you only talk about the pain. You won't talk about the benefits of that particular move. Okay, that's why we called you here. Can you give us the benefits of that particular move? Tell me the pain that you've seen. No, you say I shouldn't talk about the pain. You are here to defend yeah, look, what you believe. Yes, is look, right. what I'm saying to and you I'm is saying that, how, what are the benefits of these people? The economic spin offs that come off that particular area when, when there's uh, more jobs created. And the same people that have been moved, some of them come back as uh, employees of that particular so do, do, do you believe in people being moved from what they own and then coming back to work for someone else without owning? No, no, no. You, you, are, you are bringing that up now, but you, that was not your proposition. Your proposition, no, it wasn't. Because remember, we are saying those people are being moved, they are given the opportunity to say, uh, if they want to be part owners, they are given that opportunity to be part owners of whoever is investing in that particular area. Or if they don't want to be part owners, they are moved to other areas where they will still own. Unlike the, the regime, of the Smith regime and whatever, they will just dispossess and then give you... In, in. Uh, this Den Daily did not give these people any chance to own anything. Which is Den Daily? Den Daily, the company that is trying to establish this Lucent farm at Shinoga. These people were not given, they were not offered anything. Otherwise, they wouldn't be resisting this displacement. They were not offered anything. They were just told you are on reserved land, which you don't have any ownership to, so you have to move. That's why these people have gone to the extent of even going to court to say, some of them have even been saying that would rather be killed than move. There's no who would offer to be killed than own something in a company that is going to make them better. So I am saying it is not true that these people are being moved for something that is going to benefit them. They are being moved from something that is benefiting them to something that is not going to benefit them. And we have, it's so interesting that you say people are not just being moved. Because I will tell you about people, we are talking about 700,000 people who were affected by displacements of Operation Rabatwina, who were left homeless. When stands were offered under Operation Karikai, they were taken up by members of the uniformed forces of Zimbabwe, who were the ones that were destroying these so called shacks. They took up, they destroyed people's. Uh, dwellings, then they took up the land that was given to these people as well, including uh, Chiangwa, who is a Zanu PF official, or was a Zanu PF official by then. He took stands. So I am saying it's not true that when Zanu PF moves people, or when, or when the Zanu PF led government moves people, they give them uh, alternative accommodation. I think they don't. I think you are, you are, you are, you are, one thing that is, you are talking all over the place. And I think what is happening is that if you come to Operation in Grand Batsu, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about people who already were, they had settled themselves in land which was probably not suitable for, for, for settlement, or they had built shacks. The reason why it was called Operation in Grand Batsu, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I think it, it means uh, uh, dead. So, it was an operation which wanted to cleanse or to make sure that people stay in a proper environment. So these people were offered spaces. Uh, if you go to now, now there's a place called Salani uh, Wuste or something. Who stays there? Then uh, if you go almost every township, there is a there is a place where these tents were created for people who were moved from those areas. So if you say that, then the the, the process became corrupted. Uh, it's another uh, conversation. You, you, you cannot then blame the Zanzibar government for not having offered these people space. Uh, it is now the, the style of the person who has implemented who became corrupt. And therefore, if you know that there's something like that, then they report that person to the law enforcement and then that person will not be arrested. Which law enforcement agent? Because I'm talking about land that was offered to these people but was given 
to the same people who are removing them, the same people who should who we should report these things to. And I'm talking it's about the, police. Yeah, that's right. Like, from the beginning, I told you that you are conflating Zanu PF from the state, you know, and, and the state. You are conflating Zanu PF and the state, or oh, and the government. So you you speak. Uh, as if you are talking to a sample of official who is me, and at the same time you speak to me as uh, somebody who is implementing government program. So you, you must be able to distinguish the two. Zambia's members also were affected by Operation Number Two. Zambia's members also, if you say they 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 they, they, were, they didn't benefit, it, it is Zambia's members who didn't benefit because someone was corrupt as well. No, no. I think we have to. We have to cleanly uh, discuss this. I said there is a law for every displacement or movement of people. When you remove people from a particular area, you don't remove them before first offering them uh, an alternative place. And the other uh, part of that law is that when you remove people from their land, whether that land is illegally, illegally acquired or not, but they have erected some, uh, they've come up with some development in that particular area. You compensate them for that development. People went to build these so called shakes, what we call them shakes, in these uh, stands that they owned because there was a serious back backlog in the housing provision in these city centers. Government went there, removed these people, and when I say government, I'm talking about a government that is led by Zanu PF. And it's so interesting that, or oxymoronic, that when we say what is Zanu PF achieved, you've been mentioning things like Kwai Shangani Dem here, they were done by government, not by a particular party. Then when something has been done and is found to be negative, you want to absorb Zanu PF of that. You mean we, so we, I, I want to mention it to Gwai Shangani because it's so interesting that since 1912, during mm. the, the colonial era, that dam was mooted at that period. But uh, it has only happened now because the Zambia government, now led by Edin Nangawa, yeah. has, it does. It does not just talk, it so implements. It becomes Zanu PF government when it does something that is no, not no. positive. And it's not Zanu PF government when it abuses people. Is no, that what are, we say there are weaknesses in every system, there are weaknesses. We have acknowledged our weaknesses. But you are accusing me of conflating. You are no, saying yes. Zanu PF government. When I talk about Ukura will be killing people, it's a Zanu PF government thing. When you talk about Baishangani Dam being built, it's a Zanu PF government. So why should it be Zanu PF when you are putting in the pocket and not Zanu PF when you are taking away from the pocket? Because at the end of the day, we are talking about when we say no, Zanu all I say is, is Zanu PF. All I say is that when you talk of Zanu PF, you must be able to distinguish between Zanu PF and the state. So that we are able to, when I came here, I told you that I represent Zanu PF South Africa, I don't represent the government of Zimbabwe. Even though it's led by Zanu PF, but I, I'm saying you, 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 you guided my conversation to be able to to speak about the successes of the Zanu PF government, which which is what I did. But if you want also the failures, we can we can we can chronicle them the failures of the Zanu PF government, but also we can chronicle the successes as well. But I tell you that the fact that Zanu PF is still in power now is because the successes are more than the failures of the Zanu PF government. Which is why you vote Zanpev every five years and make sure that Zanpev will give them a mandate. As we speak, 2023, uh, on the 23rd of August, it's a, it's a foregone conclusion that I was going to win that election. And you will be happy that you voted Zanpev. So, uh, what's oxymoronic is the fact that you come here and uh, spew some uh, new people are thinking, but come 2023, on 10th of August, you will be on the queue for the Zanu PF, <laughs> which you know delivers. No, no, no. Uh, I don't want us to talk about myself because I've never voted Zanu PF and I'm not going to vote in 2023. I'm not a registered voter. But I want us to have a genuine conversation and give these people who are watching here the respect that they deserve. Because when they watch here, 
They want us to be genuine with each other and to be genuine with the actualities of the crowd. You, I think we have stayed some minutes without going anywhere. Yeah, which is why I thought we were going to talk about the coming elections, but you, you have decided to go back in this When it involves Zanu PF, it cannot only be about the coming elections because we need you to convince these people that you have said that Zanu PF is going to win. I don't know about that. You also know that. But we want these people to have confidence in the government that is coming, which you have said is a Zanu PF government. And I will say on their behalf that I am not convinced because I hear the same Zanupiev rhetoric of saying where there are failures, we don't take the blame, but where there are positives, we take the credit. Because for us to be able to correct, and when I say for us to be able to correct, I'm talking about myself being a Zimbabwe who is being led by Zanupiev. For us to be able to correct the wrongs that we have done, we need to first admit that the wrongs that we've done. Zambia has admitted wrongs. Zambia has admitted the budget. Zambia has the government. Zambia has admitted weaknesses. Uh, has it admitted weaknesses? And, 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 and it has also with corruption. Yes, it has admitted that there is corruption in society, and also, therefore in society. Yes, and Zambia belongs to that particular society. But the first thing is for Zambia to admit that there is corruption within its ranks. Zambia is part of that and, society. And, and deal with it. Zambia is part of that society which is which has the corruption. Zambia we can't divorce it from the society where it operates. So there is corruption in society. Zambia is dealing with corruption whether in its ranks or outside. Zambia as the leading party, Zambia leads and it leaves. It lives within the society. It leads that particular society. And therefore it has got the responsibility to deal with the corruption. And it has been dealing with corruption. And uh, I agree with you. That's why I asked, how is ZANPF dealt with corruption? Do you have examples of hearing I am aware of uh, the fact that uh, ZANPF has even established anti-corruption uh, corruption commission uh, and it has positioned that organ right into the presidency so that we elevate the issue of corruption. What is that, and therefore, what is that commission done? Which is tangible to say they We are not, not going to discuss individual cases, but as a journalist, you are aware of the work that the commission has done. Yeah, um, I'm asking for that commission. I'm asking for the commission. These people are not journalists who are watching. No, but so they need to hear it from you. No, what I'm saying to you is that the anti corruption commission has got a lot of successes. A lot of people have been arrested, and some of them are now outside the country running away and they are fugitives of the law because of the way it has been biting that like, anti corruption commission. And uh, we are aware that apart from the Anti Corruption Commission, there are also organs that are established in terms of how the architecture of the state is created that deal with corruption on a day to day basis. So, as a result, uh, corruption, uh, anti corruption is uh, the nature of Zanipia. We are anti corruption. And as a result, that's why even the president uh, is still uh, relevant and important that this office against corruption be positioned within this office. Yeah, you, 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 you say they have uh, created this anti corruption commission. I admit they did. Uh, although it's not Zambia's government. So it's now government. No, 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 it's not always no, 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 because no, no, you, you want, you want, you want no, no, it to be government when on. it suits you and it becomes. Uh, 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 allow me to. You, you, know, you were to saying, you just said when we do good, I we, we, we punt it high and when we don't. You, you say you were not that. There is a reason why I raised that. I am saying. And I, want, I wanted you to come back and say how this becomes an PF. But now you already interrupted. Let me say, they established this commission. It's not the only commission that they established. And it's also not the only commission that has not delivered anything. I want something tangible to say. So and so was arrested. You say there are many cases. I don't want to names yet. But, but, okay, give me three cases to say. Out of the men, you say there are men. Out of the men, there was a success yet. Because what I know is there's never been anyone who has been convicted. Buy for corruption 
by the Anti-Corruption Commission or who has been taken to court or called because it doesn't have powers of arresting anyone. But there is no one whose file has been taken to the law enforcement agents to say, arrest this person. We have found them involving themselves in corruption. So there can't be a success when such has been, hasn't happened. But it's not true. You are aware there are petty cases that... Uh, so example, uh, no, I, I wouldn't uh, mention names. Remember, I said I wouldn't mention names. So there are no cases. There are cases. People who have been arraigned by the commission, whose cases have never been finished from the, on the investigating or on the investigation stage. We hear there are people who have been convicted. Example. There are people who have been convicted. Like there, are people who, there are people who are currently even in prison uh, because of their corrupt practices. Like, like, like who is, for example? No, no, no. That is I'm not going to mention. Yeah, but I'm saying here, I'm putting it to you that there's never been a conviction by the anti corruption. There is. There is none. <laughs> there is. That one, uh, I can guarantee you, there has never been any. So there are many of these commissions. And Zanu PF is very good at paying lip service or let me say, documentary service. They come up with these good documents that they don't implement. But people like you and me want to see this, and we want to feel the results that, okay, the Anti-Corruption Commission, which is gobbling our funds, is doing ABCD. It can't just be an ornamental organization which we look and say there is this organization, but it's not doing anything. But well, let us go on. Uh, as someone from Atepelele, who comes from a region which was suffered Ukura Wundi, how does it feel for you to move into the 40th year of independence? There are people, I'm not talking about you, I'm not talking about myself. There are people who are still grieving about Ukura Wundi. There are people who still want to know where their loved ones are buried. Who do not know, they haven't found closure. How does it feel? to be a Zanukiev official who lives among these people. And when you interact with them, what is your message? Okay. Kugrawun was bad. Kugrawun is still bad. Kugrawun was a serious mistake in the nation building of Zimbabwe. Uh, you, you asked a very personal question as to how do I feel. I feel bad. Uh, but I understand that that mistake that mistake which Zambia has accepted and acknowledged that it was a terrible mistake. Uh, one of the, the, presidents, even, the presidents even said it was a moment of madness. Uh, I understand the pain that is happening, that the pain that people are, are feeling is immaterial in and in the migrants. Uh, what I don't understand is the people who now want to perpetuate the pain, who want to harvest the pain for selfish gain. We have parties like CCC or any other party that wants to harvest the pain of the people of Material for their own selfish interest. They don't want that problem solved. They don't want what you mentioned about the closure, but they don't want that thing solved. They want you to continue with your anger so that they can harvest your anger against Zambia. They want, a lot of parties are formed on the basis of the anger of the people of material So that the people will have to vote, which are voting against Zambia because people are angry. But let me tell you one thing, Zambia has created platforms to deal with these issues. You know about the NPRC, the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission. Mm -hmm. You said the commission don't deliver. Yeah. But you know that commission was chaired by Zitnare, who was chaired by the commission. People have been asked to come and explain how they want the solution or how they want this issue dealt with. They, 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 but because it's not convenient to a lot of people that Zanzibar can actually create such a platform. People want a perpetuation of the pain because the, 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 that pain is their currency. They use it to harvest what's immaterial. That is why today people can stand up and say, uh, the people of material and the CCC has got a stronghold in material. Why should people of material and have a, be a stronghold? It's because they are using the people of material and as a voting for that. They come. If you want to see that, they don't mean it. Chamisa will never talk about Kukura Wundi in Mutar. If Kukura Wundi was such a, a crime, and it was a crime against humanity, mm -hmm. if it is 
We know it's the crime against humanity. Why are people in Italy not told about Kukura Wind? Why do you have to tell these ones who are angry? Who have something to, to, to cry? Yeah, you, you, you've taken a detour towards. Oh, what what I'm saying to you, 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 I, I'm already speaking in my pain. You can see, you, you wanted to see what, uh, how I feel yeah. about the people of Material I am there. I'm also affected by Kukula mm -hmm. But I'm saying to you, like it's time the people of material land understand that this pain that we are feeling, we cannot use it forever in terms of uh, being abused. Yeah. If we want to use it, let's use it to build the, the, the people of material land. We know that there are people in other, we are not the first to suffer this kind of, uh, look at the Jews, they suffered the Holocaust, they still feel the pain. But they are using their pain to build their institutions, to build, uh, or to ensure that it's never forgotten. Yeah. To ensure that if we want to be like the Jews, then I would say we're using it in a positive way. But we don't want to be like Jews. Yeah, we're just I'm abused. saying you, you've taken it to towards politicians. The reason I'm asking, I, that's why I say there are people still want closure. Because the reason why I'm asking is because from where I'm seeing it, the people of Matebele land have somehow uh, forgiven Zanu PF for that. That's why the majority of seats in rural Matebele land are in Zanu PF hands. Very few are in Triple C hands. Which means that the people have been the first to extend a hand of reconciliation they have brought into the Unity Accord of 1987. But what has Zanu PF done? to make sure that this hand that has been extended, in terms of action, not rhetoric, this hand that has been extended has been uh, taken and this uh, newfound faith that people have in Zanu PF is not betrayed. Zanu PF continues to interact with the people of Matel through the leadership. That's rhetoric. I say beyond rhetoric. No, no, I'm going there. I'm saying Zanu PF continues to interact. Zanu PF understands that it is the people of material who must uh, lead themselves as to what and how they want uh, these issues dealt with. Uh, you just mentioned that people of material overwhelmingly avoid the Zanu PF. Uh, it's true. And as long as they are part of Zanu PF, they can decide how they want Zanu PF, what direction Zanu PF should take in order to soothe the pain that they have. Will Zanu PF listen? Zanu PF always listens. Remember, the people of material that you mentioned are already part of Zanu PF. I don't know whether, if you say will Zanu PF listen, you are imagining that there is uh, another animal called Zanu PF outside of the people of material. Uh, the reason I'm asking that is because not everyone in material supports Zanu PF. Even that minority which does not vote Zanu PF including these politicians that you're talking about who are grieving over the ground or who are trying to, as you say, harvest uh, the pain for their political gain are still the people of Matebele and some of them have genuine causes to be doing this. You say it is up to the people of Matebele to lead government or to lead Zanu PF on what needs to be done. And you also mentioned that they must make sure that this thing is not forgotten. I will talk about plagues that were erected and were destroyed. I will not say by Zanu PF because I don't have evidence that it was Zanu PF or anybody else. But I am saying uh, these things happened. We had a government official saying that somehow justifying this to say these people erected that thing without our knowledge and therefore we are not answerable to that. In a normal country or in a genuinely uh, in a country which has genuine political will to make sure that these things are not forgotten in the under a government which is remorseful over these things we would have been told instead that no, 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 we're not happy with this we're going to investigate, not in those words but saying these people erected this structure without government knowledge therefore we're not responsible for that and we're talking about a possible bomb or dynamite having been used there would, to me Sound remorseless, and also we have people being arrested. But for you already make sure that this thing is not forgotten. But you already said that 
you don't know who did the Yes, I don't. Yes. yes, I don't. So you cannot say it's I didn't say it's yes. That's why I say So at the same time, I'm saying to you, uh, nation building is not a walk in the park. Those people who built the black, they had good intentions. Mm -hmm. they, had, uh, they wanted, they, they are just pointing the direction in which they want things to be done. But in a country where we're coming from a conflict situation, you don't want to create conflict by being provocative in the way that there are people who, there are people who don't want or didn't like what they did. So which is why they, they, they did that. But if everything was done through consultation, government officials being involved, I don't think that those plants would have been destroyed. That's my opinion. I don't think those plants the plants were the plants were destroyed probably because I'm just postulating because uh, somebody who did not like what they saw, thought, no, these people are being provocative. But I agree with it, saying maybe government must deal with it in a more sensitive way. Because uh, whatever, I don't know who said it right, but you are saying something, saying something which is insensitive. Yeah. But I'm saying to you that ZANU PF, as a party in Matilda, must lead ZANU PF everywhere as to how we want things done in Materialland. I know that there are government programs that uh, have been implemented in Materialland and because people are angry, they have not participated. ZANPF wants people to participate and benefit from all government programs. Let's take for example the land reform program. The land reform program, when it came, the majority of Zimbabweans uh, or people in Materialland that was the time when MDC started. They, they were members of MDC, most of them. They didn't participate, most of them, in the land reform, in the movement of people into the farms and being allocated land. Only now, when they are members of Zambia, they realize that ah, we've lost out. We should have moved into the farms. I, I speak here out of experience. I was a land officer in Matrebe. And I could see that there were people coming from all over, coming into farms in Materialand. And people in Materialand would say, uh, we are not moving into these farms. Uh, this thing here, Jambaja, is Balupenga, uh, So, that was an opportunity missed because of the anger that we have against anything that comes from Zambia government. So, if you look at it in that context, you realize that material people belonging to Zambia, it has got, it will benefit them because government is led by Zambia. It means they will always know about government programs. They will always benefit from Zambia. The reason why most of the time you you, you say what has Zambia done to the or for the people, mm -hmm. and you seem not to know, is because. You speak from outside of San Pierre. Those of us who are in San Pierre know a lot of programs that would have benefited a lot of people, even the materialists. But because people are angry and there are people who are pushing them to continue with their anger so that they can harvest that anger and use it against San Pierre, people get excited that they are angry. Then they lose their senses in terms of what is logical. Uh, I want to challenge you to do an analysis of who benefited from government programs in Materialand. You will see that most people were coming from outside Materialand, but because, not because uh, the result of government, and government does not want people in Materialand to benefit, it's because these political parties that want people in Materialand to be angry, they always mislead them. And people are misled. So that is the situation that I've seen in materialism. Yeah. But most people now understand in materialism, they are moving away from those parties. Uh, I can tell you now that even in Bulawa, we are going to get seats in Bulawa this time. Because people now have seen through uh, the chicanery, the treachery 
of this party. We have seen through and we are not going to follow the people who tell will not follow that. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about you now. I've got my own opinion. But now, how strong uh, are Zanu PF structures in influencing government decisions? Uh, remember, the center of power is Zanu PF, the party. Power in government is derived from belonging to Zanu PF. You don't. You don't, you don't get deployed into government and start doing your own things there. You, you, you exactly. do things that Zambia has sent you to do because the policies that are implemented there are policies that Zambia will never approved. So you do admit that what you have been saying, uh, Zambia has no power on, including state apparatus acting on certain things. Uh, was wrong. No, I, I'm saying if somebody who is deployed then works against Zanupev policies, yeah. there is a way of working that person out of the system because we cannot have somebody in, deployed and therefore then they, they start implementing uh, C, triple C policies of redressing the land before. You can't. Yeah. So, you, uh, once, the moment we see that this one is not addressed in any form, we take you out. It's a, it's a two pronged reason why I asked you this. Uh, the second reason being uh, there are complaints, especially in Montevideo Land, that government deployments in Montevideo Land uh, are not representative of the Ethno linguistic setup of Guatemala. For example, you go to Plant and Water Post, you find that there are people there uh, who don't understand any local language and they're even arrogant enough to tell you that Andean is our own town. There are people in Bay Bridge who don't understand Chivenda, who to tell someone uh, from Bay Bridge. A native of Bay Bridge that and is is all down there, and is all combined. There are people who are serving uh, people in police stations in Matekele land who would want an old woman who cannot speak English was there to report a case to speak their own language, which this woman cannot even express themselves in. And at the end of the day, several cases get lost along the way. Yeah, I think uh, Zimbabwe is with us, or 16 official languages, and all of them are equal. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with you that there could be a distribution problem in terms of how Zimbabwe is promoting its language policy around. Mm -hmm. So, if there are such cases, it's not the policy of government or ZANU PF to say people are treated in a way that makes them feel inferior or their language disrespected. Uh, where this happens, it is the individual's behavior that must be condemned, not ZANU PF, because ZANU PF has no policy to say whenever you go to material land, make sure that you undermine them. You undermine everybody there. Or you go to bed because you undermine children. You go to Bamzi, uh, So there, there's nothing like that. But uh, we know that the history of Zimbabwe is such that uh, even though we have coexisted as uh, different languages, there has always been uh, a tough war as to who dominates the, the street, who dominates in the street. So people usually express themselves in ways that wants to undermine other people, but it's not a policy of Zanu PF. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's a policy of Zanu PF. We've had the president trying to speak in the way. Um, fine, that's minimal. But I'm saying if the structures of Zanu PF were being saved, I mean, yeah, were being saved by these government offices, had an influence on the decisions that government takes, they would raise it within their structures to say, in the next conference of Congress, can we come up with a policy which guides government towards 
certain deployments. For example, there is devolution of power to say if somebody has to be deployed in material, not only material, but nickel and much waste and every other province, they must at least, if they don't understand the local language, they must have this uh, will to try and learn it, but mostly let's deploy people in offices who will understand the local languages so that they are able to dispatch duties to these people who are their constituents. That, that, that has always been the case, to say uh, people must be spoken in the language that they are most comfortable with. Uh, like I said, if where somebody wants to impose themselves on you, yeah. is that person's choice, but it's not right for someone to impose on you something that you don't understand. Yeah, so, Zanukiev, like I say, what I've just said to you is what is communicated to the deployees. But now, you're saying, do we have the power to, 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 to make sure that that is done? Yeah. We obviously some of us we now and then we go to conferences, we debate and we make sure that we discuss these issues. But like I said, when it happens, it's not what somebody is concerned to do. Yeah, but it's, when it becomes widespread, uh, it gives that feeling that maybe it is because I know it's not policy because I worked for government for nine years. But I'm saying when it becomes widespread and you are the people who are being saved by these people and this argument. If you had this power, you'd know that 43 years later, we cannot be discussing tribalism in a country like Zimbabwe. We should be talking about something else, but we're still stuck here on tribal issues. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is that Zambia is open to uh, engagement on, as to how this demon of tribalism can be dealt with, because I don't think within Zambia there has ever been someone who says, no, let's practice tribalism. Okay, uh, we are drawing to the close uh, of, of this program. Um, I want you to give reasons for Zimbabwe out there. I know you've got this overconfidence that some people is going to win, and uh, already to you is for one. But I want you to give reasons why you believe there's, there's going to be an overwhelming win for Zambia in this coming election. Let's start from Zambia before we went to this, before, like, we're going to the election on the 23rd uh, of uh, August. We had primary elections, which I said were a deep sticker to what kind of support we had. More than 3.7 million people voted in our primary elections. Yeah. Now, uh, our approach now is to say uh, 2023 it did 5 million votes, which means we're only 1.3 million shy of our target. So the people who went to vote, we verified them. There are some of members. And already you can see that these are the ones that are going to the elections with us. They are actually coming to witness by how much we are going to win the election. We are not, they, they, they know they've lost the election. They are already preparing speeches of how the election was rigged. Because that is the only way in which they can continue to siphon money from their funders. So they are already creating conditions which will then invite uh, uh, some action which they would then put it out there and say, look, they are beating us up and all that. Because we know uh, that the modest operandi has been the same through and through. To say, uh, take the current folder, take the, 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 the these are the current ones, uh, make them challenge the state power. We walk onto the state house and go and tell them that you have read the election. And then when you do that, you challenge when there are institutions where you can go and complain and fail to produce the field evidence, but you walk into state house, you say you are marching into state house, uh, that, that, that is a, a prisoner's approach, 
And when that happens, people have planned to, to, to use ordinary people to actually garner support and from their funders and so that the money continues to flow into their pockets. So, Zander is aware of such uh, plans by people who are going to be doing that. What we can, we can tell by their character and the way they are doing things that very soon they will say the, the election was rigged. Before we even got to, to 23 August, Zambia, among the councillors, Zambia already has 94 councillors. I'm opposed. Yeah. Like, Zambia has fielded a candidate in every constituency. Then these guys, they've fielded double, triple candidates in some constituencies. But they will still cry a rigged election. If the election is going to be rigged, they have rigged themselves out of power already by their behavior. They are rigging themselves out. We are winning the election. And by an overwhelming majority. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I noted something quite interesting. Yeah. Is it possible to talk about Zanpia without mentioning uh, these so-called detractors, these people are opposing Zanupi. Because I realize that whenever I ask you about Zanupi, you take a detour to, to take jabs or throw shade at these other guys. Yes, it is possible to talk about Zanupi uh, without mentioning other uh, parties. Uh, but you, you, you won't get the full picture because <laughs> Zanupi as a revolutionary party is facing anti-revolutionaries. <laughs> Is facing all these people who are funded to make sure that ZANPF uh, falls and or it fails. Uh, so, for you to get a full picture of what animal ZANPF is fighting, you need to understand that these ones who are sent, uh, you see, neocolonialism or colonialism comes in guise. We defeated colonialism, but now it has come back in the guise of uh, these other political parties that are funded by our former uh, colonizers. These other political people, NGOs, and some, you know, some journalists, not all journalists, some journalists who come and parrot uh, false news about Zanipi. So, yes, we, we will always mention those who are, we call them Abashamu, uh, or in short, we call them what man. We say Abashamu because they don't understand the revolution, they are always anti revolutionary. So that is how we, we always define ourselves as not these ones, because we are revolutionary. Yeah. You can define yourself by what you are not. Now, uh, as the last question, can you kindly point, I mean, paint a picture of a Zimbabwe, first a Zimbabwe with ZANU PF still in charge for the next five years? That's the first thing. You will choose which one to paint first. And secondly, a picture without Zan PF in charge. Cool. Thank you. It's quite an interesting. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, if, if, if anything, if you have asked me that question only, then that, that would be enough. <laughs> so, 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 that's an interesting one. In the next five years, Zan PF has got programs that it has already put uh, on the table or on infrastructure development. Uh, already we have started, if you look at uh, the road network, it's changing face. If you look at our ports, are changing face. If you go to Bainbridge now, if you have not been there, you won't recognize it. If you go to Europe and Gary International Airport, you won't recognize it. If it, it shows that that is only on the infrastructure and the, the road network and the transport sector. But we also, as a of in the next five years, are transforming communities in terms of uh, the agricultural sector is changing. Uh, there are more people who are being assisted to access markets uh, than before. You will see that in the next five years, there will be many farmers who are going to be put onto the international stage uh, so that they can sell and showcase their, their product. The land reform program, one thing that the world is afraid to communicate is that it is a success. And they don't want to communicate success because then it will then not follow the narrative of uh, that land reform was a failure. They say land reform was a failure, actually it was a success. So you will see that in the next five years, through the number of farmers that are going to 
to be out there. Yours truly is also a farmer. In the next five years, I think I will sell more than 200 cake. So, if you look at uh, the education sector, uh, Zimbabwe has always been a leading uh, light in education. You will see that again as we go in the next five years, we will focus on artificial intelligence, the whole fourth, fourth industrial revolution programs uh, that will ensure that Zimbabweans compete and they take their, 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 their space in, in any way in the world. Uh, economically, we know that sanctions have crippled us, but in the next five years, we want all these people who have imposed sanctions to know that we are not going to to, to fold and we, 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 we see sanctions being lifted because we are going to defeat them. We don't see the reason why they will continue sanctioning us when the whole of the African continent is now embracing us. It won't make sense. We won't even need them, those who have imposed sanctions on us. So you will see those sanctions will be removed if something is in power. Uh, let me go to the the unlikely or the, the impossible thing that you suggested uh, that there could be another government. There will be total chaos. Uh, there will be total chaos because, first of all, uh, we, we, we will see a lot of people being invited or being told that they are supposed to move out of their farms and that will cause a civil war. Do you want a civil war? Then, what anyone who says that they will take out people from their farms? Uh, no one can accept that they have been given their birthright and then somebody comes with a Mr. Uh, John or Mr. Smith and says, no, Mr. Smith must go back onto the farm that is now owned by Mr. Moyo or Mr. Mbezi, for example. It won't happen. The, the, the people will revolt, even some members of uh, these opposition parties, they won't accept that. So, but, well, in the unlikely event that you suggested, we have a civil war. Okay. Uh, does Zanu PF consider white Zimbabweans Zimbabwean now? Those who have been naturalized uh, and uh, yes, there are Zimbabweans that, uh, to the extent that they've been naturalized as Zimbabweans. But remember, whites generally who happen to be descendants of those settlers who came to Zimbabwe, they still have a historical debt to, to, because they benefited from being whites. And, uh, but they are Zimbabweans. When being Zimbabwean is a uh, there's an act of a constitutional dispensation which says yes, you can be a Zimbabwean. But we know who they are. Okay. Uh, and just the last question. Zimbabweans are divided. Yeah. There is no particular reference we can say that that is a Zimbabwean nation. And that's mainly because the government that we have had since 1980 is somehow taking a lackadaisical approach towards creating the Zimbabwean nation. How does the next five, in the next five years, uh, ZANU PF want to unite Zimbabwe? ZANU PF has always said that uh, no one must be left behind in the building of the Zimbabwean nation. Uh, there are conversations that happen through traditional leadership, through government programs, to ensure that everybody feels that they are Zimbabwean. Uh, I know that there are people who actually have said that they don't feel Zimbabwean, mm -hmm. like um, your Mparazi uh, restorationists. And, uh, it is because uh, the history of Zimbabwe has been such that there was a time when there was a material government different from Mashal and also. But, we 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 united, and uh, we now know that Zambia works for everyone, and we believe that in the next five years, uh, the people will realize that there is no room for prosperity uh, as a nation, or there is no room for 
wanting to be anything else because uh, Zambia will make sure that no one is left behind in terms of development. So uh, I know that um, it's possible that there could be some people who think that uh, it's possible to to create um, some sort of uh, detour from the nation that Zimbabwe is built. It won't happen. It won't happen because the majority of Zimbabweans have accepted that Zimbabwe is one country and therefore uh, they have accepted that uh, Zambia is living that particular nation. And therefore it's not going to be possible. There are people who go about talking about those things and those are some people also who harvest anger and try to use it to punt a particular agenda. That uh, is not going to work because people are so integrated now that it won't uh, make sense even to themselves to continue in that line of thinking. And uh, I believe that anyone who thinks that uh, Zimbabwe is not one nation, is, they are actually self uh, destroying because it is the same mentality which then leads to people to stand back when programs that are meant to benefit them are brought to them, then they don't see it as uh, part of that great narrative. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we will invite you because there are a number of issues that still remain uh, to be discussed. Uh, in the benefit of time or with uh, we don't want to make this too long so that people watch but we'll call you again depending on our availability of course back to the studio because I know that people are going to raise some issues here they are going to come up with questions some are going to insult you but when we won't listen to those who insult it's up to them they'll be expressing their feelings but at the end of the day we are going to take those questions that are still pending and invite you again provided that you will be willing enough to come back and we take it from there it might be before the elections or after the elections but we are definitely going to call it back no thank you very much for the opportunity to actually talk to you and your listeners and uh, we appreciate any opportunity for us to speak to the people we will welcome it okay well, let us, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the program. Walter Sununguli Bongoloani, the Zanuki spokesperson for South Africa. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. I sign off from policy, the son of Nobel. <laughs>